what, what kind of forestry residue? Yeah, um, I I just kind of went out and got a, a um, sort of a, a baseline number. And really, all I'm really all I'm looking for is a order of magnitude. So the the um, problem is stated. This is a different view. <laughs> the the problem is stated is um, how much biomass, how much woody biomass does it take per day to run a, a 25 kilowatt biomax um, generator, downdraft gasifier generator. So let's let's take a look. Well, um, yeah, but it, well, all I'm looking for is just is just a is a ballpark. So here's how I did it. I just went and started with you know energy is power times time. So we're looking at you know 25 kilowatts running for 24 hours. So you need 24 kilowatt hours of energy per day. Um, so then it's just a matter of converting kilowatt hours to kilograms, so first I just went through megajoules, so one kilowatt hour is 3.6 megajoules. You know. um, and then I, I just dove out on the web and looked for some um, kind of reasonable number. What, what kind of energy densities were you guys finding for, for wood? 19.1 HHP megajoules per kilogram. Okay, 19.1. Yeah, this is one rows of 20 or 2. 20, okay, there we go. So. Yeah, so that's that's a pretty reasonable est estimate. Um, oh, I love it. I just went out here. Yeah, I even put the time in front of there. I think my KG there was probably one hour of time. Yeah, and I, and so I, I think starting with um, starting with twenty. So here we go. Common hardwood. Uh, there's you know fourteen point nine. Um, Here's 10.4 megajoules recoverable if burned at 70% efficiency. I just threw um, I just threw 10 megajoules in there. So if you had something that was more energy dense and you knocked you know half the efficiency out, you're, you're in that ballpark. But I just threw 10 megajoules out there as a like an engineering estimate and came up with 216 kilograms. Multiply that by 2.2. It's uh, it's a quarter ton. It's a quarter ton of wood. So I think on my way, so you know, basically 50 pounds per household if, if each household is, is going to use. Um, uh, I mean, I, I rode my bicycle past 50 pounds of wood that was going in the garbage this morning. <laughs> yeah. And so it, in, at, least, at least in our little um, community here with dead wood all over the place, 50 pounds seems like not much. I'm sure there are other parts of the planet where 50 pounds of wood a day is like, whoa, bumper crop. Uh, so, but anyway, it's just a matter of perspective. So it's still, it's, it's pretty small, uh, pretty small number. How scalable is that? I mean, could you easily set up a, a residential size? That, that, that's a great question. Um, how scalable is it? Well. As you'll see when we get down there and start digging around in the biomax, um, you know it's it's a kind of a one-off technology. You know they built several of them, and it's you know it takes care, it takes maintenance, and yeah, you you could scale it down, but in general, um, the the scale at which this thing is is, is sort of you know, I just want to say just just right. You know it's it's not it's not too big um, that. If it goes down, you're, you're talking about blackouts, and it's not too small that you're spending a lot of time maintaining it. So, you know, one one or two technicians can maintain this 25 watt um, gasifier rather than having to have you know 25 technicians out each maintain their own one kilowatt gasifier. Sure. So, so I think a community a community kind of set would probably go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and while we're on the topic too, I just want to show you this guy. Um, um, I'm going to meet with him. I'm going to meet with him in a couple um, a couple weeks, and then we'll we'll get into the content. But I just wanted to show you kind of the the latest things that I've been doing in in biomass lately. So um, here's the article. It's just called Tucker RNG Little Machine Big Impact. I'm going to I'm going to read the caption. It says so Tucker RNG 
system inventor, Richard Tucker, who's on the right, it's the uh, shorter man with the uh, gray hair, um, project director, oh, and Nate Anderson, he's the one on the left. So I'm going to meet with Nate in a couple of weeks because we were really um, with several companies here, International Biomass, Bitterroot Valley Greens, um, Algae Aquatech, is, is to put our biomass to better use, to energetic use in Montana. So he's with the uh, Rocky Mountain Research Station. The, um, the generator that we see here in the picture, this is down in South Carolina. And so uh, I don't remember the exact Power is making here. Let me just dig in. 2,000 degrees, 90 percent. Um, they're pulling out some tars. They're all they're, they're pulling out a few commodities, which always you know makes these things a little more profitable. It's the same thing with the oil industry. I mean, they're they're making plastics. Same thing with coal. They're making um, well a lot of different stuff. Yeah, that does not go up the stack. It, it, it turns into a um, byproduct. Anyway, um, it doesn't say how, how big this uh, system is, but I'm going to guess you know, it's, it's probably on the order of um, 100, maybe 500 kilowatt system. So uh, a lot of pipes, a lot of gizmos, a lot of chemistry going on. But uh, anyway, it's happening, and we've got resources like this, uh, human resources like this right here in, in Missoula. So I'm going to sit down with Nate uh, next week and talk about some opportunities. Yeah, okay, so we did a little, um, I just did a little plug for the Biomax. I want to see that happen, at least get started the week I'm out of town. I'll put you in touch with Brian Jackson. He's just a uh, whiz, just whiz-bang individual. Been there, done that, going places, so we're really lucky to have him. Um, oh, and I also have um, Steve Running is going to come in and lecture well, let me, let, me, let me show you guys the, the calendar here. So I'm going to be gone uh, to Japan, and then I'm going to be in the Midwest. So there are three weeks where I'm not going to be here, but I've got guest lecturers for each one. So uh, let me show you that. Yeah, I, and, and it's, it's really sweet. I'm, I, it's, it's really working out well. So March 3rd, um, you might want to write this down. So March 3rd, Steve Running. Is going to lecture. He won the Nobel Prize as part of the International Panel on Climate Change, along with Al Gore. Um, yeah, it's going to be right here, same same time, same place. And then um, I'm back on Thursday the 10th. I'm also here on Thursday the 17th. Um, March 24th, Mike Holacek. H-O-L-E-C-E-K, Holacek, is going to lecture, uh, and he'll be, he'll be here for that, uh, because I will be in Grand Rapids watching Neil deGrasse Tyson speak, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And then uh, Brian Kearns is going to lecture on the 31st. Um, my, my kids are on spring break, so I'm going to be uh, back there hanging out with them. And then, uh, so Brian's lecture is actually going to be at 5 o'clock on the 31st. He's, he's working all day, but he said he'll be over here for that. So we got running on the 3rd, Holacek on the 24th, and Kearns on the 31st of March. All-star lineup. Yeah, okay. All-star lineup. Yeah, okay. So um, let's go back and just... Look at the um, look at the course. Look at the fundamentals. I, I think I just learned something about um, the discussion boards. It sounds like I have to post something before they start. That's a, just a new twist that I did not I did not realize. But um, and and this this week I'll just show you what I posted just to kind of get it going. I I did not realize that I had to um, kick that off. So I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Can you guys just, can you see this now, though? Um, like, it shows us that, but then you go into it, and there's nothing there. I can tell you. All right. So I, I saw that late last night, kicked it off 12 hours ago. Let's see my, um, 
open my post and this, oh here it is here's my post yep. you can see it all right cool so I, I guess this and again I'm not going to change the course I think I think uh, Brian uh, did a great job setting it up but he said what's what's your favorite organic compound <laughs> It's not something you think about every day. I mean, maybe, um, well, I mean, maybe ethanol is one of my other other favorites, kind of go-to go, go to, uh, organic compound. But I just want to show you lignin. What's that? Alcohol. Yeah, ethanol, yeah. No, alcohol. What's that? Alcohol. Oh, alcohol in general. Well, I guess there's a lot of, a lot of different types of alcohol. I'd, I'd rather try, try the ethanol rather than the rubbing it's type. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so in my in my former life, um, I was I was doing a lot of um, biomechanics, and one of the one of the things we were looking at is just is just mechanical properties of plants. You know, really the the focus of this bioenergy course are the um, you know the, the chemical and energetic properties, but as a as a um, mechanical engineer, I was more interested in the in the, the mechanics. Like, how does a tree or a plant fracture? How does it break? Um, you know, obviously, in order to have your leaves up near the sunshine, you need to have a strong physical structure, etc. Lignin is the um, organic compound, and if you look, everything in there is just carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. There are only three types of atoms that make that, uh, make that thing up. Um, it's also very complex. It, it forms, um, you know, sort of a, a polymeric structure. You can see there are these sort of um, little, little chains, these sort of open, so if we, if we dive in here a little bit, let's just, let's just look at the... Um, you know, look at the bonds here. So, for example, there's a there's a dangling oxygen bond over here that could, in fact, just attach to another lignin molecule, right? And, and see, so now you've got this big, uh, you know, more or less polymeric structure that that um, that you know holds holds wood together. <laughs> and I guess you know another way. Um, I don't want to get too you know too down the mechanics rabbit hole. But if you um, if you look at from a from a strength of materials standpoint, let me just, let me just mention two little things from sort of a strength of materials standpoint. This is my own little lignin sidebar. Um, and um, let's just I'm just going to call it mechanics of materials. The first thing to note is that, um, like a, a tree in general, you know, it's, it's good. you've got your, your tree rings, etc., and um, the material itself is going to be um, stronger in this direction. It's also going to be stiffer in this direction, and the distinction. Um, the distinction between stronger and stiffer means stronger is how much stress before it breaks, and stiffness is just um, how much it stretches when you pull on it. That's the that's the distinction between strength and stiffness. Um, in this direction, um, it is weaker. So the opposite of strength is weakness. It just means it's going to fail earlier, and it's also more compliant or less stiff. And so if you draw that, um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me draw, um, two, I'm just going to draw two lines. Okay, so this first line is uh, stiffer. This first line, and, and I'm going to write. I guess what I'll do here, I'm going to write a. Um, I'm going to write uh, an S for stronger, 
and I'm, I'm going to write a K for for um, stiffer. So this first one is uh, stiffer, so I'm going to write a, a bigger K for the curve on the left and a little K for the curve on the right. This one, uh, the curve on the right, is stronger. So I'm going to write a big S, and this one is less strong or weaker, so I'm going to write a little s. So the, the difference is the slope of the curve is the stiffness, and the, the peak of the curve is the strength. And a lot of times people use those interchangeably, but they're fundamentally different engineering concepts. Strength and stiffness are different. And that's how and this is how it's quantified. So in this case, basically what we're looking at here is force, and here we're looking at um, displacement. So when you pull the thing, that's when it breaks. Okay. Um, the tree itself is um, non-isotropic, meaning that it's, it's different mechanical properties in different directions, so, um, so non-isotropic. Okay. But now, let's say we're going to make a board, right? We're going to take this and, and make a board out of it. Um, a few different ways to do that. One is with cross-laminated timbers, that's, that's turning into a big thing this, these days, where you actually take the, um, take the layers of wood and um, you know, use the fact that, okay, it's stronger, it's different in this direction, it's also stronger, it's different in this direction, you glue them together and you get the best of both worlds. Another, another option, and this is a lot of the waste wood that I saw on my ride in this morning, people just throwing away um, waste wood that could be turning into electricity, um, is to take is to take the tree, uh, you know, grind it, and then uh, you just you just have a, um, a mixture, you know, like an MDF or a particle board or what have you, and every you know, you've just got chunks kind of here, there, everywhere. So now what you've done is you've um, uh, made it isotropic. You've also made it homogeneous. And the material properties are the same in every direction. And so getting back to our lignin, um, in general, what, and, the, and this is, it's just kind of a big, messy molecule. And in general, that's kind of what you want in terms of durability. Sure. You can just beat the heck out of it. So think, you know, just, just think about this for um, a second. You know, let's say you're, um, you know, compacting soil or concrete or whatever, you've got some aggregate floating around there. All those little chunks, like the more you beat it, the, the, the tighter they become uh, compacted, connected, etc., and sort of the tougher they become. It's the same like work hardening steel. I like to think of the lignin as like an already work hardened organic molecule that holds the tree together. It's already so dense, and there's just, and you look at it, it's, um, so I talked about strength and stiffness. There's so many little nano springs in here, and just sort of places for, ener you know, mechanical energy to hide. That's why it's a, it's a great mechanical shock absorber. That's forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the problem, and, and maybe we'll look at this a little more in the course, this is also sort of the chemical jogger knot in terms of turning it into a clean burning fuel because there's again you know you're, you're, just, you're gonna burn this thing and there's just every single you, you name it and that volatile organic compound is gonna come off of this thing it's just, just not it's not as simple as that little I mean we, we did our um, methane combustion equation a couple weeks ago run this thing through. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little different yeah 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 so there, there you go so that, that's why I like complexity, and that's why I like lignin. So that's my that's my post. That's my post. Okay. I mean, does lignin really perform similarly when you when you grind to a pulp? Does it then just become sort of an amalgamous paste of, of, of Yeah, that's that's a great question. What you know, how does lignin perform if you know once you've sort of homogenized it? Um, one great question to ask would be: let, Let's say we've just got like one lignin molecule down here in a in a natural tree, and another one up here. The question is like, are those guys like connected in any way? Because once you pulp it, obviously 
if they were, they're not. And so you've already you've made all these little micro fractures in here. Um, you know, from there, it would just be a matter of, uh, you know, maybe uh, coming up with an actual glue, resin, paste, because this, you know, this thing is, you're going to have some solid in here, um, you know, fiber, and you're also going to have some um, resin. And, you know, if the resin were to be made of lignin or something uh, therein, and it then went under, went a um, uh, curing process, you might be able to restore it. Um, the lignin molecule itself is obviously tiny, but what you're relying on for material strength are these long, um, longer connections. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a break there. Let's see how the battery's doing. 30 minutes. Okay, that's just enough time to wrap up lecture. <laughs>